church truly needs to get healed and start preaching the truth. You just sang a song, they need to know about Jesus. Are we telling them about Jesus? Right. When you're at your workplace, do they see Christ in your life? And when they expect you to fall and they're wanting you to fall and fail, what are you going to do? I hadn't thought of one morning, I might go share all of it. But my job was threatened twice. I was cussed out three times. And we hadn't even been 20 minutes at work. And I didn't do a blessed thing wrong. And the contractor that called and said stuff didn't make the job. So and it didn't make it. I did my job correctly. But through all that, I never said an area a bad word. I didn't raise my temper. And the salesperson, I'll just say she could get in your face and embarrass the sailor. I'm going to leave that one alone. And she got nose to nose, and she unloaded on me. And at that point, the Holy Spirit kicked in, and I just stayed calm with my voice. Amen. And I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on him. Because yes. the old me would not have been that way. I would have told him what I thought. That's right. Amen. Well, I, and yeah, I did tell her what I thought. But she got the gospel. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, I didn't do anything wrong. We're going to get attacked. That's right. We might eat healthy. We might live a healthy lifestyle. We may have sickness come. We're going to start out the end of the seventh chapter of Matthew. Then we'll go to the sixth chapter of Luke and then into James. It says, thank you, brother. Therefore, Whatsoever, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Do we have that authority when we preach? Or when we talk to people, do we have that authority? Come on, brother. We're going through battles every day. I went through a stroke. I'm still recovering from it. But the point is, y'all said something the other Sunday night about some people being afraid of going up for prayer because if they don't get healed, then people say they don't have faith. Come on, brother. Unless the Lord tells you to tell them that, you should not never say that. Right. And the reason is because... There's a time and a season we're going to get healed. But have you chose to be healed? Sometimes people want to live in the sickness. And when they live in that sickness, well, that's, that's where they're going to be. They don't want to get healed because they want to come up. Oh, Brother Magnus. Oh, you just don't know how bad it is. I'm going to tell you that. You want to hear the testimony about being healed. Well, I built my foundation on that rock. And when I built that foundation on the rock, it's solid. The enemy has attacked, and I can say, and I praise God for it, that from the time they took me from the house in, I never had a down moment. Amen. But a lot of that came from people around me, right. my wife, people at the hospital, everybody helped. We need to help one another. That's it, brother. And so when you think, well, we prayed for them, we keep praying for them. Okay, we can keep praying for them, and we need to. But I was thinking the one night I was looking at Miami Valley Hospital for my room, and all those bricks, probably a million bricks. Well, when they brought all the bricks out, and we got the gospel, it's all right there. Well, that wall didn't just instantly pop up. They had to do it one brick at a time. Well, when you all said that the other night, I was thinking about that. Okay, every time I get prayed for, that's one prayer closer to me being fully healed. Amen. But did we dig down and get solid, and are we sure? When that song was contested, he said, it can't be of God, and I would never say that again. I knew God gave that song to me, and I knew how. But he would not hear the testimony behind it. It's going up to Dayton on a Saturday. 
I had about five hours of running to do. And this hit me. And I said, I need to pull over and write it down. The Lord said, I'll give it to you tonight. Do it at church tonight. So I wrote it down. When I got home, I forgot about it. He said, it's time. 20 minutes. I had two verses, of course. We were good. I did it that night. And the preacher preaching, had he wrote the message and I read it, dead center on his message. When God gives us the work to do, we need to do it the way he wants it done. That's it, brother. That's the only way it's ever going to work is if we do it his way. Your, my way will mess it up. Well, he would not never hear that part. And about three years later, I did that song under the tent down in Smith Park. And Brother Sandusky said, you didn't have no idea what I was going to preach on tonight. I nailed his message. But he gave me something the Lord gave me 40 years ago. And that... Very love that song exactly. And I, I thank God for the confirmation, but I didn't need it. But when we want healing, you know the enemy will attack. Sometimes he'll come through family or friends or even church people. Oh, you're too far gone. Somebody a while back, he said, well, I got stage four cancer. I said, okay. Pastor Mullins put it this way, and I liked it. Him healing cancer is no more to God than wiping a runny nose. It ain't no different to him. Come on, brother. Well, it shouldn't be any different to us. Right. One sin will put you in hell. No matter what sin is. Well, the same thing. Whatever the sickness is. God's no respecter of a person. He said we are healed. Isaiah said, with his stripes we're healed. And then 1 Peter 2.24, he said... By his stripes you were healed. But there's three kinds of healing that I see. The first, our souls were sick with sin. Right. And we were going down to hell. We were, we were lost. When we got born again and saved, our sin-sick soul got healed. Amen. But when our soul got healed, after our soul was healed, then there came a mental healing. We put on the mind of Christ. We became the Word. In our thinking. Well, once our mind is thinking right, the flesh has to come under subjection to that. So there's three kinds of healing. And I've got a study Bible at the house. And it said that when it says, with his stripes we're healed, does not really mean a physical. It's just a spiritual healing. I can't accept that. Because when the Lord spoke to me and told me I was healed many years ago, and I knew I was healed. And I didn't no more feel healed than nothing. But he said I was healed, therefore I knew I was. So I either had to stand on what he said or listen to you know who. I don't want to listen to him because he'll bring nothing but destruction. But when we're building, are we digging down and making that foundation solid? That's it, brother. And then when we start the cornerstone, the builder rejected. You have a cornerstone, and everything on that house builds off of that, and when they build up, the church down at Fifth and Wayne used to be St. Paul Luther. It's closed now. But when they put the scaffolding up to redo the steeple, it took them four weeks to put the scaffolding up. And people say, well, all you do is put the section down. My dad knew this, and so did I, but he said, when we start, that first piece has to be perfectly plumb, perfectly level. You've got to make sure that what it's standing on is solid, that it won't sink down. Because if you're off a 32nd of an inch here, by the time you get 20 feet up, you're leaning. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're not building straight and true on that foundation, we're going to fall. Right. But when we build right, and we look into it, <laughs> if we go over to there, because if we build on something that sinks, that ain't going to work. Not you go to jack your car or truck up when you got a flat tire. Have you ever tried to use a bottle jack when you're in the <laughs> sand? It don't work. The foundation will not hold up. But if you go to the 6th chapter of Luke, the 46th verse. And why call ye me... And why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, 
and do it then. I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon the rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a foundation, built an house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Storms will come and will attack, but did we dig down and are we sure of what we know in this word? And if we're sure, then we should not, well, we're going to have skirmishes. We might not win. We might have times where we stagger. And Kenny Angel, years back, anyway, I won't get into it, but I know they went through a battle. And I know his faith was shaken. It never wavered. But it was shaken. Sometimes we're going to get hit hard. And when we get hit hard, my boy said, you're too good of a person to have to go through a stroke. Bad things happen to good people. Right. Oh, I wonder what he did. He got sick. I served Lord Jesus Christ. And when you serve him, you're going to get attacked. The, the enemy way. will try to tear you down. And when he can't get at you, he will come through family and friends. That's why... We're to know those whom we labor amongst. And if we know the people we labor amongst. I know if I talk to y'all, you're going to talk about Jesus. You're going to share something good. I told Brother Abner one time when he called, I said, I already know what you're going to tell me. Because I know him. I know what his mind is thinking of. Well, we need to surround ourselves with people that are going to lift us up That's right. and be positive. To encourage us. And when I went over to Mo's power equipment today, I had to get some stuff. And I said, is there anything they make for a grand sanatorial that you can operate it with one hand? Because it takes both hands. It's a zero turn that you stand on. And he said, uh, some landscapers do disconnect one of the safety switches. But he said you should have two hands to be able to grab it, which he's right. But you don't do that. They're there for a reason. We have the word for a reason. It's a safety net to catch us. When we fall, repent and go on. If we fall short and we do sometimes, we go on. My healing's not coming as fast as I'd like it to come. But there's a reason. And it's working out for my benefit. There's a long-term disability at work I didn't realize we got. And I'm waiting on the rest of the paperwork to get that done. I've got another insurance policy that kicked in. And I'm waiting on them to get back with me. God is taking care of all of our needs. Amen. And I made a bar after therapy call and check because uh, home therapy, we've not got a bill yet. I'm not worried about it. But the point is, to my knowledge, everything's paid for. The Lord's taking care of everything. Amen. And people have said, are you doing okay? Yeah, we're doing okay. We've had some love offerings sent our way. God's taking care of it. But I had to stand on God's word. And I dug down. When I got saved, I dug down because I didn't have a choice. Taking care of mom and dad. Didn't know from day to day what the next day is going to bring. So I had to have something solid to hang on to. And I was blessed to have a good pastor. He's gone on. But he was solid in the word. And whenever I talked to him, if I was getting down or... Uh, he said, what does the word tell you? And then we said, okay, leave it right there. You know what the word says. I'm living. And that was basically his philosophy. God said it. Therefore it is. Whatever he says. But when the floods come, if we are solid in our foundation, the house I grew up in when Dad built it, he dug down and made very sure. And if it called for a footer that was six foot by eight foot, it went 10 by 12. Because whatever he did, he went over and above what was required. And when he drew the blueprints up, they wouldn't accept them because an architect has to draw them. 
and they said he needed two columns in the garage because the garage was concrete above and the sides. There was three levels to the house. Well, he took it down to the guy and he looked at my dad and he said, why are we redrawing these? I can't draw them that good. And so he, he made copies so the city would accept them. The house is still up on Riverside and it's one of the most solid houses built. But my dad knew without a good foundation, you can't accomplish anything. That's right, brother. And nothing will work right without it because it will be unstable. And when you try to fix something, in high school I made a frame for a light and I didn't quite get it square. So I decided to cut the piece going in, not square. <laughs> Teacher bought that about like nothing. No, I didn't do good on that one. But instead of owning up to what I did and then doing it right, I tried to fudge around it. We can't do that with the gospel. We gotta be upright. And people have to see it real in our lives. And we need to let them know about Jesus. There's a lot of people die lost every day. Amen. Right. Amen. And some of them are in church. Mm -hmm. Elder Taylor said, when I first got saved, the hardest people in the world saves church people. I thought he was nuts. But then after I realized what he was saying. They're set in their religious traditions. Come on, brother. And you can't get them out of it for That's nothing. It. Well, my great-grandpa done it this way and his dad. And... No, that's how we do it around here. I do it God's way. Amen. Ultimately, that will bring forth whatever we have need of. But if we do it any other way, we're going wrong about it and it won't work. But when we do it God's way, it works. And our foundation, if we are sure when they come and tell you you're wrong, now, I won't share it, but I uh, ministered and prayed to somebody down in Middletown some years back. And they said, you can't talk to people that way. Well, I told them the truth. And I wouldn't waver from it because I knew that's what God put on my heart to tell the girl. And I told her. And it came out right. And I didn't do anything wrong. And it brought her and got her right with the Lord. That was the important thing. But they were looking at it. Well, you're going to run people off. Well, Jesus said it's impossible what offenses are going to come. Sometimes we're going to say things and they're not going to like it. That's right, brother. And a lot of times I've heard you preach messages and I think, boy, 30-some years ago, I wouldn't have liked you very well. <laughs> but when I got saved, I realized I had to pay attention to the Word and what's getting said. Amen. And sometimes it didn't set real well with me because I grew up being taught one way. We've got to get in the Word and study the Word. And if we go over to James' first chapter, just a couple verses there. Because he said in uh, Joshua, meditate there in day and night. Don't let this word depart from your mouth. Meditate there in day and night. But 22nd verse here, first chapter of James. If we are meditating on the word, our mind will be where it needs to be. And if we're praising God, that adversely affects the devil and his tricks. And when you're in the middle of your battle and you're looking up praising God. Now the disciples, when they got put in prison, they counted it joy that they were counted worthy to endorse for his name. Are we counting it when we go through that with people at work get on you? And the vertex saw down where I work, the guard that goes over it, it's about three inches wide, two and a half inches wide. And I just took a marker and I put a cross on there. Well, I had to run escort when I got back. One of the guys, and I know who it was, he said, well, somebody really got upset with that. Whatever. So they took the marker and went through it to get rid of the cross. Well, I knew who he was talking about. And they're going to church now, by the way. <laughs> because when you go through your battle, people are watching to see what you're doing. And you know, every time I talk to them, a driver right 
runs wide loads, calls me about once a week to see how I'm doing. He's got a lot of respect for me because he knows what I'm going to say. And it says here, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. But we look into the perfect law of liberty, the word of God, and we continue. We hear the word, you preach a good message Sunday night. I heard it, but if I don't go do nothing about it, what is it? The therapist giving me stuff to do. Well, if I don't do it, I'm not going to get better. Right. When they want you to do one mile, go two miles, so to speak. Well, thank God that I did improve 30% over what I was. And maybe some people can't see that improvement, but I can. But it's not always big leaps and bounds, but it takes one step. They've got a sign up down there. A thousand mile journey starts with one step. Well, when we get our healing, it came forth because God was going to heal us. He already did. And we want healed. What are we doing to get our healing? Are we staying in the Word? Or are we sitting back, well, He healed me. I guess whenever He wants to, He'll get it done. No, we've got to get out and do it. When Sister Wilkes got her healing, and it's long testimony, I won't share that, but she had two deacons hold her up in church to testify her healing. The next day, the Lord said, go show yourself. She meant get out and go walk. Her and her husband walked arm in arm down Roanoke one side and down the other about wore her out. But the point is, when he gives us something to do, are we doing it or are we hearing it and say, oh, that's nice. Well, they give me sheeting to cut at work. I got to actually pick it up and put it in the saw because otherwise it ain't going to get cut. That's right. It won't walk on its own and go, it won't do that. And we've got guys come in and they don't think they have to work. They think... I was taught growing up good work ethics by my dad and mom. More from my dad, I saw it in my mom, her work ethics. And my sister said once, I don't know how mom kept that house that clean with us three kids. And she'd get up in the middle of the night when dad worked nights on the police department. And when he'd come home, dad would eat whatever. He didn't care leftovers, but she would fix him a fresh meal because he had worked. My mom would do that, and I look back, how many people, and I'm not getting on women or anybody, but how many would do that for their helpmate? But they worked together as a team and because they did. I saw that growing up. That's why they stayed together 55 or so years until the Lord took them home. They went through their battles. They had a lot of things come their way, but they stayed true to the course because they had a good foundation. That's it, brother. And thank God for the foundation they had. And that us three kids were taught about Jesus. We knew that. And I like that song. Are we telling them about Jesus? We need to. We need to get out and profess it. Well, you can't go in the rooms and pray in the hospital. If God sends you, you'll get in there. If you're walking right with him. Well, you can't do that. They won't let you in. If God wants you in the room, you show up, you'll get in the room. Amen. And it'll work out right. And I'll close with this. There was a guy who worked at Warren County, and Kenny Angel and I both talked to him. He smoked like a freight train. About every 25, 30 minutes, he'd come out and have to smoke a cigarette. Well, the guard shack was right there, and I talked to him. And his mom and dad, beautiful, saved people. And he said, I can't see the logic serving a God I can't see. What, what is the purpose of it? And Kenny and I tried to talk to him. We went in for a minor surgery touch-up, went into a coma, and two weeks later he wasn't here. 
All I know is Kenny and I did what we could, but I was back, I finally got to go back to ICU and his mom and dad were there, I met them and nurse came in, another nurse, and then their pastor came in and they normally only want two people back there. And I said, I guess it's getting a little crowded, I need to go, and the nurse said, no, you're fine, you can stay. And I said, well, we're getting a few too many, and the pastor turned around and said, stay. I want you to hear what we pray. So I got to stay. Had a three-year-old and five-year-old girls, beautiful girls, and it just broke my heart to think they lost their daddy. But mom and dad's faith was of such. He may be in a coma, yeah. but God can deal with him. Yeah. They never gave up. Are we giving up while they're in a coma or whatever? No, we still minister to them as though they are conscious and talking back because God can work through anything. But if we don't have a solid foundation, we'll look at it from carnal eyes instead of spiritual eyes. Amen. That's all I got. Amen. Amen.